These are two grassroots groups. We were responding to a problem. With all these women coming and we wondered what in the hell we could do. That, for example, in 82 or 81 or 82, anyway, you can trust this data because we've got the figures. You know, uh, 21,000 women came from Spain to have abortions here in, in, in England and uh, 8,000 women or over 8,000 women came from Ireland, 6,000 of whom came from the south from the, you know, uh, from, from the, from, um, the Republic, from the Republic, and, uh, and, and two thousand, over 2,000 came from six counties. Yeah. I became involved at least at a distance on the abortion issue in the early 60s when I had a backstreet abortion myself here in England. People tend to think that the 67 Act uh, was just one of those uh, things that happened along the way. It was a major watershed and a backstreet abortion here in London was just as gruesome if you didn't have the money to go to Harley Street, which I certainly didn't, and I nearly died. How did I get involved? Uh, well, I was a part of the Spanish Abortion Support Group and also for a, for a period of time I was one of the people. There were several women actually, like uh, two before me and one after me and several volunteers always, you know, mm -hmm. um, who answer the phone. When did you, uh, the Irish and Spanish groups get together? Very, from the beginning. Uh, from the beginning. Yeah, you know, we were following the lead really of the Irish women here, you know, who formed the, 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 the abortion support group and, uh, and so did we. of how Ireland's anti-choice laws discriminate especially against women in Ireland who can't afford or who are not permitted to travel to the UK. Sail away, 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 sail away. Twelve women a day, Ireland sends them away across the Irish Sea. goodness all these women how did you manage to support them all we couldn't support them all there's no way we could support them all we only supported the women that we came across yeah and I think it's important to say that this was very small scale mm. very small scale most people didn't have a phone uh, poor people didn't have a phone my house at home in Ireland didn't have a phone no. um, so people were looking for pay phones out in the middle of nowhere uh, very often from the countryside and they feared being overheard and all this kind of thing. And our job was really to answer that phone, talk to the women, be totally sympathetic, like, to arrange for an appointment with one of the clinics, to coordinate two rotas, one mm -hmm. for the Spanish abortion support group and one for the Irish one. And if the woman was calling from Ireland to call one of the sisters in, uh, in Iwask and say, hey, you know, we've got somebody, uh, can you do this? and the support groups work together and we did a survey of all the clinics 
So in a sense, it was like saying to the clinics, we're watching you. We met with them, mm -hmm. not only to monitor them, but also to, to make deals as yeah. both support groups, yeah? About uh, how much would they charge women for an abortion at this stage, at this stage, at this stage. We would hold meetings together with one of their workers, health worker, would take us through the different procedures. Oh, it, it was very frightening uh, to have to face all this situation and wonder how best you could service women because it's the service side, including the finding of the money, that's the big issue. Talking about being Do innovative. <laughs> yes. uh, I mean, yes, uh, we, we certainly were very good at that. I'm not an anarchist, but um, we were always interested in their ability to be able to do uh, public actions that touched a nerve, you know, and um, also to capture in something artistic that particular problem, that conundrum. And, and Spain, of course, had an enormous amount of cultural um, manifestations like the um, I had an abortion movement, which yeah. happened in Italy as well. And that was a real amazing, pretty, pretty big movement. All the feminist collectives in Spain had uh, abortion commissions. This, this was mainly a movement led by women, but there were men supporting a part of this because some of the doctors got, got, got arrested and there were trials. The abortion trials in Spain were humongous because they, they self inculpations. The, the, the rate of them was so big that uh, it was just like hundreds and hundreds of people saying, mm. I've had an abortion, mm. arrest me. Yeah. Or I've helped someone had an abortion. Somebody who had an abortion stayed with me. I'm a doctor, I've performed an abortion. I'm a nurse, I've helped with an abortion. Uh, that did not happen in Ireland. And I can give you oceans of cases where very brave women are afraid to speak out because they believe, and I have to believe that they know that their children and their grandchildren will be deeply affected. Mm -hmm. uh, Spanish Catholicism is one thing, uh, Irish Catholicism is another, altogether different as it is different from Italian yeah. uh, Catholicism. In Ireland the church was part of the resistance against colonialism yeah. and the church was outlawed, you know, for mm -hmm. centuries. And then when independence came, the British left, but in, in their place the vacuum was filled mm -hmm. by the Catholic Church that took over physically, took over the schools and the social services and many, many of the institutions. Even now you get arguments from very well-educated people and sometimes feminists and mm. pro-choice activists yeah. who say, what's the matter with the bloody Irish? Why are they so different? Where is all this exceptionalism coming from? Is Catholicism in the water? Is it in the Guinness? At the level of anti-Irish racism that was going on at the time over the Troubles is exactly uh, replicated now by what goes on with the Muslim community. Mm -hmm. For us, it was really, we were on our own to find money and so we created our own culture. Mm -hmm. uh, we created an alternative Irish community which was not copper fastened Irish. I mean, we were internationalists. I was part of the Chile Solidarity Campaign Everybody and the Nicaraguan yeah. Solidarity Campaign. I still have all the posters. Mm -hmm. There was a lot of internationalism. Mm -hmm. Yes. And everyone did everything they could. We went to each other's events. We and organized joint events. And organized joint events. The idea was to control our own lives, our own bodies, our own sexuality, our own everything. In 2014, you have young Irish women yeah. working with young, Sp well, youngish <laughs> Spanish yeah. women. And also on an intergenerational thing that we're all yes. still here working with. And together. you're working yeah, with yeah, us. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. yeah. The situation that Spanish women will face is the same as what Irish women face every day who choose to come and have an abortion here. Under nine weeks, and this is the abortion pill only, it arrives, the total treatment is 630 euros. Then it creeps up, let us say up to 14 weeks, is 930 euros all the way to 19 to 24 weeks, which is 2,030 euros that has to be found um, before you consider travelling or accommodation. Well, in Ireland it has not improved, mm -hmm. right? Travel and different ways of communicating might have improved or there might have been a diversity of organisations supporting differently, you know? But like in the situation in El Salvador, uh, before the Gallardón law, 
I would have said, wow, women in El Salvador are facing now what we were facing in Spain 30 years ago. No. Mm -hmm. What women mm -hmm. in Spain are facing now again and yes. women in Ireland have been facing all the way through. really liked the phrase that you used, Dan, which was Groundhog Day for the Irish women and Deja Vu for Spanish women. It's always very Deja Vu again. Mm -hmm.